Chapter 4, The Sleeping E.T.'s Quiz Before you read the following profile of the qualities and experiences that are clues to a possible E.T. identity, you might want to ask yourself one simple important question. Can I really know for sure that I am an E.T. soul? In my opinion, yes, but only if you ask yourself sincerely and really want to know the truth at a core level beneath all the conditioned notions of who you think you are. To make this kind of recognition, it takes a process of subjective knowing, and it requires a quiet, receptive mind in which you can focus your mind or focus your question again and again, and then wait patiently. With an open mind, free from haste, welcoming and accepting whatever inspiration comes, and then seeking its meaning, this is the way to allow subjective knowing. You can apply your critical reason later. The profile below shows some of what I look for when I'm trying to figure out if someone is an ET soul. As you read, each of the following clues remain sensitive to any feelings, memories, or images that arise. Even if you don't understand what they are, what they mean, or where they come from, just be with your experience. Remember, to be ET or not ET is not a big deal, but if it's true, you really ought to admit it. Keep an open mind and a receptive heart and then listen to the clues that arise from the deep. The balance here is between reason and intuition. Number one, were you often lost in daydreams of UFOs, ETs, other worlds, space travel, and ideal societies as a child? Your family may have thought you were a bit odd without knowing quite why. Number two, did you sometimes feel like your parents were not your true parents, that your real family was far away or hidden? Perhaps you thought things around you were somehow not the way they ought to be, or you had faint recollections of another way of life, entirely different. These beliefs may have caused you a great deal of discomfort. You felt out of place, and perhaps you were. Number three, have you had one or more vivid UFO experiences, whether in dreams or during waking hours, which dramatically changed your life? They helped resolve doubts, inspired confidence and hope, or gave you meaning and a greater sense of purpose. You may have felt a subtle shift in consciousness, an increase in spiritual presence, or a fundamentally altered outlook on life, all connected with that experience. It really changed your life. You became a different person. Number four, are you genuinely kind, gentle, harmless, peaceful, and non-aggressive? Not just always, not just sometimes, but almost always. If someone must do without does it usually end up being you? Acts of human cruelty, mindless destruction, global warfare may seem really strange, or shall we say alien, to you? Killing off one's brothers and sisters, destroying the environment that is our home, and so on. All this anger, rage, and violence just doesn't compute. Number five, did you have a hard time recognizing evil and trickery? Do some people call you naive? When you do perceive real negativity, perhaps you recoil in horror and feel somewhat shocked that people really do things like that. You may actually feel confused, perhaps sensing that life doesn't have to be this way or that you've known a place or a life free of such conflict. Number six, is the essence of your life serving others, be they family, friends, colleagues, or clients? You hold great ideals, which may also be somewhat innocent and naive in worldly terms, but you sincerely and truly hope to help the world. You've probably experienced a lot of disappointment and frustration when your hopes and dreams are not materialized. Number seven, could you be described as having a scientific temperament with a cool, reasonable, and measured approach to life? Human passion and red-hot desire seem strange. When you find these traits in others, you feel somewhat baffled. Romantic love and the entire world of feelings are far removed from your logical, analytical way. Perhaps people say you are in your head, and it's probably true. Note, wanderers of this type are not common, and most of them wouldn't even be reading this book. They are often skeptics to the UFO issue, and even hardened debunkers, such as the late Dr. Carl Sagan. They may also be great scientists, odd birds, brilliant inventors, new science enthusiasts, or wild-eyed eccentrics. Number eight. Can you quickly lose yourself in science fiction, medieval epic fantasy such as the works of J.R. Tolkien, and visionary art? Your dreams of the past or future may seem more real than life in the present, and sometimes you consider your earth life boring and empty, 
and long for an exciting life of adventure. Such yearnings have been with you many years. Number nine. Do you have a strong interest in UFOs, life on other worlds, or previous Earth civilizations, such as Atlantis or Lemuria? Sometimes you feel like you've been there, and you may even go back someday. Perhaps you've amassed an extensive home library on such subjects. Note, this is really a giveaway, since only walk-ins and wanderers have profound curiosity about worlds beyond, and for good reason, since they just recently left them. Number 10. Do you have a strong interest in mystic spirituality, either in theory or practice, with a sense that you used to have greater powers but somehow lost them? When you begin to get involved in their practices, you may feel it's unnecessary to discipline yourself since you've already been there, and even though you don't or you seem to have forgotten what you used to know, others may doubt your sincerity and resolve, but you know it's not that simple. Number 11. Are you a conscious channel for ETs or some other non-Earth source of spiritual teaching? And you already realize that the purpose of your life is to help others grow and evolve. If you answered yes, well, you're probably no longer sleeping, wanderer. And number 12. Do you feel, perhaps all your life, have felt great alienation and a sense of never quite fitting in? Maybe you hope to be like others. Try your best to be normal or sincerely imagine that you're really not that different but all your mental tricks never quite work. You simply feel different, and you always have. Time to be honest here. You have a very real fear you may never find a place in this world. Note, this is the classic trait of wanderers. The truth is, some wanderers do not find a comfortable place down here. Of all the different indicators in the profile above, you should know that the last one, which is feeling different, is the most common trait among those from elsewhere. Of course, not everyone who feels alienated from human society is an E.T. soul, but among those who do, many are, especially if you're reading this book. If you have some kind of inner knowing that you might be a wanderer, then it's critical to use discernment when deciding with whom of your friends and family you'll share your ideas. As I discussed in From Elsewhere, Many marriages have not weathered the storms of the E.T. coming out phase, and in some cases, merely raising the possibility of cosmic belonging was sufficient to destroy a partner's trust. One man told me his wife felt betrayed when she learned he had a separate E.T. family in the stars. It was as if he had a second wife in another state. Besides grappling with who to tell, how to tell, or how much to tell your significant others, you may also have to deal with hostility from friends and acquaintances. Some of those I interviewed in my first book were not self-sufficient enough to keep quiet and were then flooded by negativity and ridicule from those in whom they had confided. While it's certainly hard, you can try to use such criticism as a mirror to clarify your own thinking. It's best to give every opinion a hearing, compare all the views and possibilities, let it all settle down in your mind, and then listen to what you think as in the process of subjective knowing that helped many wanderers clarify their spiritual experiences, identity, and purpose on Earth, you can use the same self-validation process to figure out which opinions to trust, which to hold, and which to discard. Interacting with people who question our beliefs is a fine way of deepening our familiarity with exactly what we do believe. The title of Robert A. Heinlein's sci-fi classic, A Stranger in a Strange Land, is the perfect description of being a wanderer on Earth. In some sense, each of the indicators in the ET profile above are simply variations on a theme. They are leads and pointers that can help you get clear if indeed you are such a stranger down here. In fact, with planet Earth looking more and more like planet Hollywood every day, a lot of people would agree that this is indeed a strange land. If you're still lost in doubt, I recommend you learn how to relax into your natural mind which may, however, require quite a lot of disciplined meditation, and then listen for the quiet inner voice. I assure you, with time, all doubts fall away, and only the real will remain. So have faith in yourself. We all have the resources we need to understand and integrate what is truly essential to our life on Earth. Again, if you are a wanderer or E.T. walk-in, you really ought to know it. If not, it's fine with me if you leave it alone. For another version of this ET quiz, check out Appendix 3. In the next chapter, we'll zero in on the most common experience of ETs living on Earth, not fitting in.